Nora, so let's get to the crucial issue now, which is getting aid and assistance into uh, Palestinians uh, still in uh, Gaza. Uh, you know, there's been talk about a window, uh, escape routes, uh, etc. None of this has transpired. U.S. President Biden, of course, uh, was just there and uh, promised that aid would be getting into Palestinians. Uh, a lot of it has to do with borders, though, and whether Egypt will cooperate, uh, especially at the, at the Rafah crossing. How, how is this all going to work? I mean, the, the, the stuff, the shipments, the tons of aid and material, I it's there on the Egypt side, but it's not getting in. You know, we're talking about the logistics of how to deliver humanitarian aid, but I think we need to talk about the context. If we talk about the logistics, we lose sight of the fact that Israel is waging a genocidal warfare with genocidal intent. They, Israel's president said that there are no Palestinian civilians. Its minister of defense called Palestinians human animals and said that they would cut off electricity and water. Right now, there is no electricity to hospitals making ch babies who are being born in incubators at risk of dying. Over a thousand babies and have died already, and yet there is no moral outrage. You just mentioned a UN school, which is a neutral area designated by a blue emblem, was struck uh, just on Saturday. We know that 18 in medics were struck according to uh, Medicine Sans Frontier. The humanitarian convoy that was directed on a humanitarian route was struck, killing 70. We have near uh, over 3,600 Palestinians who have been killed, who have been subject to siege. Palestinians on the inside are saying that they haven't had food for two days. What President Biden should have done today was not promise aid. He should have used his role as the leader of global superpower and Israel's primary patron to demand an immediate ceasefire, to demand an immediate ceasefire and an end to this carnage. I have to ask an audience. How many Palestinian lives have to be lost before there is horror and outrage? 3,600 in 11 days? The amount of bombs that have been dropped, carpet bombing of apartment buildings, the fact that they don't have access to water and food right now? If this happened to any other people, there would be absolute outrage. But because of the dehumanization of Palestinians, people in their heads say it's really tragic, but somehow it's their fault. And we need to push back against this. Nora, the call for retaliation, though, is overwhelming after the Hamas attacks on Israelis and the abductions more than a week ago. And Israel is determined to eliminate Hamas. It's determined to pursue a military solution. What then are uh, the prospects for a ceasefire and humanitarian support? Firstly, let's establish that there is no room for vengeance and retaliation in international law. That is just unacceptable. That is the, pop, the language of the strong to decimate the weak. Second of all, there is no way to decimate Hamas via a military option. Israel has tried that since it was uh, voted uh, democratically elected into power in 2006 and never given the right to govern and to fail. There was a siege imposed upon it. There have been five large-scale wars that have been waged against it. Every single time, Israel, uh, Hamas doesn't disappear because what they represent, right, is not just a Hamas agenda, but more generally, they are demanding freedom for Palestinian people. And so you can decimate Hamas, but you can't get rid of that, that fervor for freedom. Yeah. Consider yeah. the West Bank. This is not about Hamas. This is not about Hamas. Consider the West Bank. There are no rockets there. There is a, a, a completely acquiescent government there. They, Israel has never had a more compliant leader than Mahmoud Abbas, who literally polices Palestinians to protect the Israeli settlers. And look how is what Israel has done in the West Bank. It has expanded its settlement enterprise. It is said it has moved its uh, administration from military to civilian hands, basically saying that it's permanent. There is about to be a de jure annexation. This isn't about Hamas. That is a red herring for people in this moment, because what is not what is being obscured is a structural condition of an apartheid system, as declared by Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, several Israeli human rights organizations. 56 years of military occupation, 17 years of siege. So if we talk about Hamas, you are missing the point.
you are missing the point that we have to end the structural conditions that have given rise yeah. to this particular crisis. You're going to end this crisis and still maintain a war against Palestinians that we have not resolved.